Etc.'s How To Series. This week we're going to be covering heat surge products and how to diagnose what problem you have and potentially what parts you need. I do want to indicate though that heat surge does not recommend consumers replacing their own parts, neither do we. If it's possible for you to bring it in for service, not only will it be done right, but certainly be less cost effective in the long run. Um, with that in mind, we're going to be troubleshooting heat surges and what potentially could be causing some of the problems that you're having. So let's get started. The most common problem that people tend to have is that the unit is not blowing off heat or it shuts down. Typically when a unit shuts down, it will depend on what model it is, what year the machine was made, as to what the problem usually is. Um, if you haven't watched our very first video on how to diagnose what model or unit that you have, please take a moment and review that. It's under How to Repair Your Heat Surge on our YouTube channel, as well as our website at www.myvacuumplace.com under the How To section under Heat Surge Resources. Check it out. It's definitely worth viewing, and you will certainly need it to look up the parts that you need. Uh, which brings a very important issue. If you are buying parts, please do so at the MyVacuumPlace.com. That's why we do these videos for you. But also on there, we give you the right information. When you go on to our uh, part changeout uh, guide, it will tell you exactly what part you need for what model you have. Meaning that not just a main control board will go bad, it will be the main control board along with the keypad circuit board or along with the heater depending on your model. So in other words, some parts require additional parts because they have been modified or updated. Um, if it's not blowing air, the very first thing that you want to check is the fan. So take the unit apart. Again, that's indicated on our first video on how to repair your heat surge. Get to the fan motor and you're going to inspect the fan to make sure that the fan is not too dirty. That's typically the problem. A dirty fan will stop the unit. That video also shows you how to replace that fan. The second problem with it not producing heat is not enough airflow. Uh, the airflow or the heater coil itself reply, uh, relies directly on the amount of airflow coming across the, the heater itself. If there's not enough airflow, the heater will get too hot, and because of a safety device built on the heater, it will shut itself down. Typically, you'll hear a series of beats when that happens. On a shutdown, you either want to clean the unit, check the fan itself. If for some reason it still shuts down, you have plenty of airflow, there are ways that you can bypass uh, the heater to ensure that that's the problem. And we'll cover that here in just a moment. Uh, the other thing we're going to cover is replacing the main control board on this particular unit. So another issue that some people have is that the flames are running backwards. If that is the case, that's always the synchro motor. The synchro motor is a small motor, just like this, that turns a rod with foil on it. When the lights hit the foil, it causes that, that flames that you see uh, in the back of the unit. That's what causes them to go backwards. Simply replace the flame motor, and that issue itself will be resolved. Sometimes you will hear a uh, clicking, and it's a brief clicking, like a click, 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 click. Typically, that is also coming from the synchro motor. If it were the fan, it would be a very fast click. Um, so light, quick ticks, again that will be caused by the synchro motor. Shuttering is another problem, where the flames just start to shudder real bad. If that is the case, again it's also the synchro motor. Uh, the synchro motors have a very thick grease inside of its gears, and that grease needs to be at a certain temperature. So sometimes if it's really super cold, and you're just starting the unit up, that will cause some issues with that synchro motor or potentially could damage it. If you're buying a new heat surge, their recommendation is, as well as a little warning sticker that you get when you buy them, is to allow the unit to warm up to room temperature before running it. And that's the reason why, that synchro motor. 
Um, the most common part that's actually going to be replaced on your heat surge, as I referred to earlier, is the main control board. That's what we're going to cover. But please keep this in mind. There are three different types of control boards depending on the model that you have. So it's very important to go through that very first video on uh, how to repair your heat surge and make sure that you know the model number and the year it was made. The year is indicated through the serial number or with the date code. Um, many units will require additional parts as this one would that we're going to work on. This one we're going to replace the main control board as well as the keypad circuit board. Uh, so this one does require two different parts. So let's get started. Alright, so this particular unit you can see a definite problem and that is major major dust. The dust is a fan killer. This gets into the bushings of the fan throws the thing off balance, wears out the brass bushings, and it will need to be replaced. A good way to tell whether or not your fan needs to be replaced is plug it in first. <laughs> is if it makes a loud crankling noise and you see that fan wobble. So to replace your fan just check out the video uh, the very first video we shot on uh, preparing your heat surge. This particular one we're going to cover doing the main circuit board or the main control board. So let's get started. I'm going to clean up the unit. We'll be right back. Alright so we went ahead and replaced the fan in this unit. We've cleaned it up real nice got a good workspace to go from. Well the first thing we're going to do is make sure that the unit is unplugged. We're going to disconnect the keypad circuit board. Now this particular model which is an ADL 2000 MX from 2008 will require not only the main control board which we're replacing but it will also require the keypad circuit board and it's only the circuit board on this particular unit that gets replaced. So, I'm just going to use a pair of pliers. You're going to disconnect all the wires, the motor wire, the fan wires, the heater wires, get them all disconnected. So I've removed the thermal wire and all the power wires, all the ground wires are completely disconnected from the board. Remove the four screws. And remove the main control board. One thing I want to point out, this mat. This blue mat is a grounded mat. This is uh, uh, an electronic board. Static electricity can affect these boards. I try and make sure that we're completely grounded in order not to damage the new board that we're going to be putting on. Alright, so this is the new main control board. Quite different looking, aren't they? Uh, again, this unit has been upgraded, and because of the difference, that's why it also requires a new keypad circuit board. The old one will not work with it. And in some cases, an older model, like an ADL 2007 model, will also require the heater to be replaced because it does not have this same setup on top, which is a, uh, uh, a um, thermal couple switch. If you install the new main control board, you will see that the screw holes do not line up with the old post. This new board is much wider. So it's only going to accept two screws. Two screws I put on are the end screws close to the tip switch, the front and the back. Now the heat surge diagram shows uh, drilling holes to hold the additional board. I think it has a very good tight fit. I don't feel like drilling holes into a circuit board, especially one as fragile as the heat surge board. So 
for me, I just use the two screws. Then the fun part, installing the wiring back to its place. I'm going to go ahead and show you what wires will go to this particular model. They do slightly vary depending on the heat surge that you're installing as to whether or not it has regular light bulbs like this one or LED lights. This particular yellow wire here is the lights. On the board you'll see it says lamp, fan, flame, then you'll see a 750 watt, another 750 watt, and then ACL1, ACL2, and ACL3. The yellow wire is going to connect to the lamp. The brown wire is your flame motor, and that will connect to the flame. Now, the fan wire, which is the second one, will be the shortest wire from the fan, and that will connect to that one. It's a black wire, and that comes directly from the fan. The second wire to the fan is a ground wire and will connect to the back under ACL2. Alright. The heater wire, the first one which connects from the bottom will go to the first 750 watt slot. The longer black wire in this case will go to the second one which is the 750 watt. Combined they make the 1400 watt so in other words low and then high. This is your thermocouple wire switch. Take one blue wire and two blue wires. The main power wire, which comes from the tip switch, goes into ACL3, the very last slot. The ground wires here in the back aren't important or as important as to the direction. We do like to put them in the right places. Um, you'll see on this particular model, these are connected together. We're going to separate these two. And I'll just bend this back. We'll put this in the first slot. This one in the third slot. Then the ground wire from the flame and fan will go into the last slot. Finally, you'll have, which this model has, the 2000. Uh, 7 model does not have, but this is a thermal couple wire that's going to go into the appropriate sized slot on the main control board. These two items are reserved for a different model. If you have um, one of the newer models, you will add the red one to the red one and then the white one to the white one. There are three different sizes, so you can't get it wrong. Just match up the color. Now, onto the main control board keypad circuit board. First thing you're going to do, remove the four screws. And take the circuit board off. So the new one will not quite fit into the slots. Um, the plastic housing needs to be shaved a little bit. We're going to remove that by just two little tabs here. Push that side in. That side in. Pops right out. Now what we're going to take off is just a little bit of the top edge of this right here on all four corners. I like to use a little grinder. So we're going to take that off real quick, or you can just use a little razor blade and, and clean that up. So I went ahead and shaved those off. Now the new main control board 
once we put this in here, we'll fit flush on top of the screw mounts. But before we do, this needs to go back in place. Just push it in until it snaps in place. Turn it back over and you're ready to install the main control board. The four lights will go into those four open slots. The buttons that stick out will push the operation buttons. Thing to remember if you're using a power drill like myself is to never over tighten them. If you over tighten them when you go to push on that board, the circuit board will just fall backwards and you will not be able to operate the unit until you replace the actual keypad cover, which we do sell on our website. They're fairly spendy, they're $14.95. Sometimes nice if the buttons wear out. However, for $14.95 you can get one with the circuit board and the cover. However, you cannot use the remote control for that. So if you have a remote control, you don't want to you don't want to do that. You just want to get the standard um, keypad circuit board that's required for your unit. From there, we're going to test this unit. We're going to plug this back in. Making sure all the wires are out of the place. Hands free away from the unit. Plug it in. That very first beep indicates that we have a working unit. We have fan or flame rather. This particular one has a light bulb that's burned out. We have a low speed. Wait for it. A click just happened that tells us low speed is working and low heat is working. We have low heat. Kick it into high. We'll wait for another click. I turned it off. There's high. There's the second click. Unit's working. Once we've done that, simple as putting the unit back together. Um, if your machine is a 2008 unit and the reset button pops all the time, and you're having to continually hit the reset button, the first thing to try is simply replacing the heat, uh, the reset switch, which is located right up here. Replacing the heat surge switch will generally stop the problem. If the new heat surge switch or reset switch continues to pop, then you have a power issue that needs to be addressed um, and certainly should be looked at. Now, on occasion, this thermal couple switch right here can go bad. I'm going to shut the unit off and unplug it. Anytime you unplug the unit, you want to give it its normal time of cool down. The fan's running still to cool off uh, the infrared heater. Once that's cooled off, then go ahead and completely shut down the unit by unplugging it. But this thermocouple switch plays an important role. The one thing that you don't want to do is bypass it or fuse it together. Uh, you are definitely setting yourself up for a fire hazard. Um, that is designed that if that heater gets too hot, it shuts itself down. Again, it will get too hot if for some reason this fan doesn't turn. Like I'm holding the fan right now. In five seconds, the heater is going to kick on. The heater just kicked on. The heater's warming up. It's realizing it's too hot right now, and it's about to shut down, and you're going to hear those beeps. About 15 beeps indicate an airflow shutdown system. Until that reset switch or that, that switch cools down, this unit will not run. Uh, that that uh, thermal couple wire needs to be reset. I'm going to cool it down. So there we are, running again. Uh, that is one issue. If this fan starts to slow down, the speed of it is reducing the airflow. That same airflow loss will also cause that heater to eventually get too hot, 
and a thermocouple switch to kick on and say, hey, I'm too hot, it shuts down. Again, you're going to hear it by those excessive amount of beeps. Um, and again, that's all generally caused by a uh, low airflow issue with the, the fan. Now, on a rare occasion, I have actually seen these thermocouple switch go bad. And again, I say rare occasion. When that happens, you just simply replace the entire heater itself. So on a rare occasion, this thermocouple switch will go bad. If your unit keeps shutting down and you know it has airflow, a good way to test to see if it is the thermocouple switch is simply to unplug the two green wires, or green, I'm sorry, blue wires that are housed in a, a cotton material. Unplug them. Take a jumper wire similar to this, bypass the switch all together going from LC1 to LC2 just with this wire. Run the unit. If it doesn't shut down then it was the thermocouple switch. Simply replace the heater uh, and you're rocking and rolling. Just remember to go to uh, the part change out uh, guide that we have on our website at themyvacuumplace.com to ensure there's no additional parts uh, to that heater that need to be replaced. Generally not. Uh, the main issues, again, are the main control board, and the most common thing people will do is they'll go on the website, just click on it, order it, send it, and all of a sudden realize it doesn't work. Calling back for an exchange, well, guess what? They just needed to order a couple more parts. Um, that's a simple issue. If it's making noise, it's the fan. If you hear it clicking or ticking noise or the fan shutters or jittles, simply replace the synchro motor. Um, We'll show you in another video on how to replace the synchro motor, so stay tuned for that one. As well as working on some of our new models, which you'll see right over here. This one's called the EV2. It is uh, Heat Surge's brand new model. Uh, the only issue that we're having with those is that uh, uh, some grease in the fan bearings uh, were not the right grease. Otherwise, uh, that seems to be a lot better unit. So again, my name is David. If you have any questions on how to repair your heat surge or you're having trouble, please visit the website first, watch the videos, uh, go to the uh, how-to section of www.myvacuumplace.com, click the heat surge resources, make sure you go to that, uh, that uh, part guide, uh, change out matrix guide on what parts you will need to replace. If you're ordering parts from us, we're glad to help you go through them and figure out what you need. I can send you a diagram for wiring your unit. As long as you bought the product from us, we're happy to uh, email that to you. Uh, but we don't make that public. Otherwise, again, thanks for watching our video. Hopefully this helps.